Welcome to the Nevis Newscast for Thursday, January 25th, 2018. I'm Fredicia Liburd. In observance of Cervical Cancer Awareness Month, the Ministry of Health will be conducting for the second time an outreach activity that targets women on Nevis. Today, we spoke with Coordinator of Community Nursing Services, Nurse Ermin Jeffers, who gave us the details. This month, under the theme, Reduce Your Risk, the Ministry of Health, in collaboration with the Health Promotion Unit, and community nursing services in Nevis will be having free cervical screening for pap or pap smear on January 27, 2018 at all the health centers in Nevis from 8 a.m. to 12 midday. Now, we are doing this because we realize that health centers are open from Monday to Friday and we have persons in our community who work Monday to Friday and are unable to access the service at the health centers. So because of this, we, are, we have decided to open on a Saturday so that those persons can come in and have their pap smears done. As noted by Nurse Jeffers, all women who are sexually active should take advantage of the free screening. I would like to take this opportunity to encourage all women to take advantage of this free service. And I would also like them to remember that early detection saves lives. And if detected early, cervical cancer is one of the most successful, successfully treatable cancers. We have on the island of Nevis, Charleston Health Centre, mm -hmm. located in Charleston, Chapel Street, Brown Hill Health Centre, Gingerland Health Centre, Butler's Health Centre, Combermere Health Centre and Cotton Ground Health Centre. So all the health centres will be open. According to Nurse Jeffers, the results of a pap smear are usually available within four weeks of the examination. Some 114 women benefited from last year's outreach activity. A student of the Charlestown Secondary School is the winner of the senior category of the local leg of the Florida Caribbean Cruise Association FCCA Foundation Children's Essay Competition. On Wednesday, January 24th, that student was presented with her prize. So I will call to the stage Miss Jerisa Liburd. Miss Liburd um, was judged the local winner in the senior category of the Florida Caribbean Cruise Association or FCCA essay contest. Now the topic that Jerisa wrote on was, what will cruise passengers learn about my country? and what will they remember most and hold with them. And so Jerisa will be handsomely rewarded with a cash prize of 200 US dollars. Jerisa Liburd received her prize from Assistant Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, John Hanley. Ms. Liburd, on behalf of the Ministry of Tourism, on behalf of the Premier, the Honorable Mark Brantley, who is the Minister of Tourism, and the FCCA, I wish to congratulate you on winning the local leg of the FCCA essay competition and I hope that you will continue to participate. Congratulations. Meantime, the Assistant Permanent Secretary also used the opportunity to encourage other students to participate in this year's FCCA Foundation Children's Essay Competition. Ms. Liburd won 200 US at the local level. But if you win at the regional level, that is, if you are better than everybody else in Jamaica and Barbados and Trinidad and so on, if you are better than all those countries, then you can win 1,500 US dollars. What is even better is that the school will also win 1,500 US dollars. Each year, the FCCA Foundation Children's Essay Competition prompts Caribbean and Latin American students to write essays transmitting the relationship between cruise tourism and their destinations. Individuals in possession of temporary driver's licenses will now be required to produce photo identification along with their temporary driver's licenses to traffic police. 
The Honorable Mark Brantley aired his concerns about the misuse of temporary driver's licenses while speaking in support of the Vehicles and Road Traffic Amendment Bill 2018 at the sitting of the National Assembly on Tuesday, January 23rd. The minister noted that currently motorists are given a 48-hour grace period to produce a valid driver's license if pulled over. He explained that this has caused some issues for the traffic department when persons have failed to produce the required information in the stated time. He further noted that there has been some misuse of issued temporary driver's licenses because multiple persons have used the same license because there is no photo identification attached. He said the proposed amendments will help to rectify issues of non-compliance with motorists pro producing their identification on the spot rather than being allotted the 48-hour grace period. Additionally, motorists will be required to produce their temporary driver's licenses as well as the driver's licenses obtained from their home country if pulled over by the traffic police. A driver can produce a valid photo ID from his or her country with the temporary driver's license if he or she does not have the original driver's license on hand. Brantley noted that citizens of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, under the arrangement for the free movement of people, can use the driver's licenses obtained in their home countries in the Federation without applying for a temporary license. Drivers are advised to have their valid identification and all necessary documents on hand while driving a motor vehicle. Still to come... I'm not thinking about me when I'm doing this. If I was doing, I'm thinking about this from 91, everybody in Sink is Nevis will about, know about the circle of peace. The details after this break. Welcome back. The Circle of Peace Youth Program held an awards ceremony for inmates of Her Majesty's Prison who took part in a recently concluded poetry contest which was held under the theme, My Action, My Pain, You Wouldn't Like to Be Me. During the ceremony held on Tuesday, January 23rd at the Nevis Performing Arts Center, three participants in the persons of Ricky Ferlance, who placed first, Lumumba Matthew, who placed second, and James Ham, who placed third, were awarded with certificates of congratulations by founder of the Circle of Peace, John Prentice, and assistant superintendent of prisons, Alton Liburd. Here are a few excerpts of the winning entries. He said, was it the correct decision to disobey my mom, elders, and dad when I chose to listen to the wrong interpretation in my head? My choices have proven fruitless, which brought me to this world of despair. Because of misdirected thoughts I obeyed, my short destination ends right here. So you don't want to be me. Countless attacks, fearless and reckless, became a map. And the law was taught not until sentenced to death and on a condemn block. With a sentence reduced to life, of course, she moved on with her life. Just sitting in jail, watching the days turn into nights. Children are left fatherless, and that's a big, big regret. With sleepless nights and frightening dreams, oh Lord, oh Lord, my heart did scream. Somehow I knew my end was close, for most my homies were dead and broke. Thank God I've survived to tell this tale, doing 15 years locked away in jail. Founder of the Circle of Peace program is John Prentice. The hardest thing for any young man and any young woman to do is to tell you they cannot pencil properly and think about it. We have a lot of young people in the street don't know how to put over the self to us. The only right thing to go about it 
It's a one-on-one -on -one program. And remember, leaders of youth groups, whatever they tell you, keep it in your heart like the ocean. You cannot find it. The worst thing to do when a young man come and tell you he cannot pencil properly, he cannot read properly, and you tell others. You make him mad with you, and you might make him a bigger person to get in trouble. If you cannot lift me, do not jog me. So please try and help the young people, especially the youth program. What I'm doing, I'm not thinking about me when I'm doing this. If I was doing, I'm thinking about this from 91, everybody in St. Kitts Nevis will about, know about the circle of peace. I go and look for the youths that really need help. My program is to help those that need help. Awards for remarkable improvements were also presented to Dustin Lapsey, Remy Gums, and James Allen. A number of supporters and contributors were also presented with certificates of appreciation. The members of the Circle of Peace are the Honorable Spencer Brand, Superintendent Alton Liburd, and Director of Youth Development, Sanola Claxton, and Remy Gums. Prentice also thanked Loretta France and Mentoris Otherton for their support over the years. Meantime, two young men were presented with awards for remarkable improvement since their release, Remy Gums and Dustin Lapsey. James Ham, who is currently incarcerated, also received the award. The awards were presented by the Honorable Spencer Brand. One of the recipients, Remy Gums, who is also a member of the Circle of Peace in delivering brief remarks, lauded the efforts of the program. A pillow within itself is neither bad or good. You could use it for good, you could use it for bad. You could rest your head on a pillow, you could take, that's for good. You could take that same pillow and asphyxiate someone. A pen, likewise, good within itself, not bad within itself. You take a pen, you write a nice love letter, and charm the cardiac organ of a uh, damsel, or you can take that pen and severely injure that one. What I'm trying to say is nothing, as well as no one, is all good or all bad, but is what we choose to focus on. If we choose to focus on the fact that a pillow could only be used to suffocate someone, we wouldn't have no kind of use for that pillow. And if we choose to focus on the fact that a pen could only be utilized to severely injure someone, we'll have very little use for that pen. Similarly, with us as human beings, all of us, and it's so easy to focus on the negative. That's the simplest thing to do. And I commend this program because it is not focusing on the shortcomings, but more so they are focusing on the true value and the worth of every human being, regardless of what they might have done or did in their past time. During the brief ceremony, a number of awards were presented to contributors, supporters, and friends who, over the years, has helped the program advance. The Circle of Peace program was founded by former prison officer John Prentice in the year 1991. The body of former Commissioner of Police Robert Jeffers will be laid to rest with full military honours. Prime Minister the Honourable Dr. Timothy Harris announced on Tuesday, January 23rd, during the first sitting of the National Assembly for 2018. The former Commissioner of Police died on January 14, 2018, at the age of 70. The funeral for Robert Jeffers, who served as St. Kitts and Nevis's Commissioner of Police from 2004 to 2008, will take place at the Wesley Methodist Church on Seton Street in Bastyr, St. Kitts, tomorrow, Friday, January 26th, from 2 p.m., with viewing and tributes between 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. The Defense Force Band and Drum Corps will provide musical accompaniment for the funeral procession. A bearing party will shoulder and carry his coffin, a firing party to fire volleys of blank cartridges at the Springfield Cemetery, a color party to carry the flag of the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force, and a mourning party comprising of members of the police force, the defense force, and other disciplined organizations. 
Robert Jeffers leaves a rich legacy of enduring service to the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force and the community. He gave close to 42 years of dedicated service to the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force. That's it for this edition of the Nevis Newscast. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Information, I'm Aphrodisia Liburd. Thank you for viewing.